Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, tonight for this training on the drinking gels. Uh, my name is David Urch, and uh, to give you a little bit of my background, uh, I've been with the company for 27 years as an FBO. Uh, we're soaring managers in the scheme, uh, but also I've been on the advisory board for 26 of those years. You'll see from the, the slide there that uh, I've got quite a few qualifications. I started off with a degree in physiology and nutrition, then a, a master's in medical sciences, uh, then I did a veterinary degree, and I finally did my diploma in human herbal uh, medicine. Uh, throughout the years, I've carried out quite a bit of clinical trials on, on the aloe, and I use it on a daily basis for both humans and animals, and I take the products my, myself as well. Uh, tonight, I want to really try to show you some of the unique points with regard to our company uh, and our products. And we'll start by looking at the company. Um, you'll be aware that the company's now been going 45 years this year, uh, established by Rex Morn. But if you go back a little bit, back to 1964, when Rex discovered the properties of aloe vera, he noticed that the problem was that once you filleted the gel, it started to oxidize and go brown. And he was trying to find a method to stabilize the gel. So we got a group of chemists together back in 1964, and they worked for four years to try to find a way of naturally stabilizing the gel using uh, plants as the main source of those stabilizing agents. And it was by 1968 that he actually had formulated and got a patent for the stabilization process. At that time, he also came up with six different products. You had a gel, a juice, an activator, uh, jelly, topical lotion, and heat lotion. And at that time, the company was run by Aloe Vera of America. And they actually looked after the plantations uh, and the processing facilities. And at that time also, he then started to establish a way of retailing the products, and he came up with the multi-level marketing system we use today. And that was formed into Forever Living Products in 1978. And a couple of years later, in 1981, Forever Living Products purchased Aloe Vera of America to ensure that that company only produced Aloe Vera for Forever Living Products. In 1982, uh, they had a very severe frost in the southern states of America and Texas, and it killed a lot of the aloe vera plants. And so Rex then decided that what he needed to do was find a country where you didn't get frost. And so he moved to the Caribbean, and particularly the Dominican Republic. You'll also see on the slide that um, he also wanted to um, find a good source for his bee products, and in 1983, he purchased the Robson Bee Company. So that's quite unique. You've got a family business. Uh, it's not a corporation. There's no shareholders to pay. It's all done by the family, and they give us back uh, a lot of the profits, as you know. Going to look at the history of aloe, uh, aloe has been used for over 2,000 years. It's a uh, it was actually started in 2000 BC, so it was actually 4,000 years ago. And aloe means uh, aloe, a shiny, bitter substance. It's very like amber to look at. And if you lick it, it's got this very bitter taste. But it wasn't really until about the 1800s uh, that it came to the UK and Europe. And it was actually called horse or cape aloes then, and particularly came from Jamaica. Uh, there were veterinary surgeons on the scene soon after that, and by 19, sorry, 18, 1844, they formed the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, and they were given a charter to produce their coat of arms, which you can see on the right-hand side. The reason I show that is because you have Centaur at the top there holding a little shield, and on that shield is a little plant, and that plant, fortunately for us, is aloe vera. It's the true aloe, and it's aloe barbadensis. So you can see it was used by the veterinary medical profession for a long, long period of time. When it comes to naming plants, it's important to have the correct name uh, for aloe vera, and that's what this taxonomy means. Uh, basically, there are over 300 different species of aloe, but we tend to use aloe barbadensis, 
but you'll see here that there's also aloe ferox, aloe peri baker, and aloe arborensis. The reason they use barbadensis is because it is relatively easy to cultivate in the right environment, but also it gives up a good content of gel. It's also a xerophyte. That means that it lives in very dry, arid conditions, like um, deserty conditions, because it needs a very free-draining soil, uh, which is often sandy. Throughout the world, where are we based? Well, we're particularly based in America, as you can see from this slide. Uh, we have centers in Scottsdale and Phoenix in Arizona, uh, production facilities in Dallas, Texas, and a lot of our aloe fields now are in the Dominican Republic. How many plants do we have? We have over 50 million aloe vera plants. Um, we have 30 million in the Dominican Republic, and it's about 6,500 acres altogether. We, of course, are the largest producer of aloe vera in the world. Each plant receives around 2,000 hours of sunshine every year because they need the sunshine to produce the, the gel inside the leaf. We have about 85 tons of leaves every day and about 8 million gallons of aloe vera a year. The raw material can vary slightly because it will depend on the soil type, the climate when they're harvested, the season and the harvest method. And another thing which makes us unique is that we always take by hand the mature leaves off these plants. We don't go around chopping off the whole plant, we only take the mature leaf. And that's unique to forever. We also are very conscious about the environment and we ensure that a lot of water isn't wasted because these plants do need watering regularly and we use a drip feed system, which is basically like a perforated hose pipe, which goes down each row of the leaves, and that is then turned on several times a day to give them a very, very small amounts of water, because you mustn't overwater them, and those pumps are worked by solar power. Uh, we've also reduced the packaging. Um, when I started with Forever, first of all, a lot of the products, like the jelly and the propolis cream, came in individual little uh, boxes. They don't anymore, and they have a very tight recycling program at the facilities, the production facilities. We also even compost the rind, so the rind isn't wasted, it's put into a big compost heap, and that's then put back onto the plantations about 30 tonnes a day. Uh, it is said that around 20 aloe vera plants convert the same amount of CO2 into oxygen as one tree, which of course over a year is going to cleanse the air of several million tonnes of CO2. Aloe vera of America. We need to be very clear about this. Um, Aloe vera of America is owned by Rex, as I explained at the beginning. He purchased this company, and it only produces aloe vera for forever living. Their side of the business is to actually look after the plantations and the plants and actually produce the, the gel. It's based in uh, Dallas and Texas. And the other important point which makes us unique is that the leaves are processed within six hours of them being cut. Now that's unusual because most companies can't do that. But what we've done is on the plantations, we have a separate facility at each plantation where they can take it into this facility and it's stabilized straight away. We do over 1.4 million tests uh, on our products every year as well to make sure they're absolutely safe and um, can be stored. If you actually look at the leaf of an aloe vera plant, and you can see here, on the bottom on the right hand side it shows a complete leaf and a little tiny section that we've taken out of it. And it's important to know where the actual different nutrients come from in our gel. You'll see at the top there in the dark green that is the rind, that's about 15 cells thick and that's where all the nutrients are synthesized. Uh, they are then circulated around the plant by pericyclic tubules, that's the sap, those little yellowy dots, that's the sap, the pericyclic tubules, and it uses xylem and phloem, and it basically moves the nutrients around the, the leaf. The rind also has a waxy coating, which decreases evaporation of water from the plant as well. Below the sap layer, you'll see the yellowy colour, that's the mucilage. That's an important layer, because in the mucilage, <coughs> you'll find the polysaccharides, and particularly the ace manin is found in that layer, also, it's important, and again, it's a unique point to us, we fillet it through that layer. So our, our, our leaves are actually filleted through the mucilage layer. That means you have some of the sap, 
um, mainly the mucilage, and then a big proportion of those lighter colour cells, their parenchyma cells, and they're the ones which store the actual nutrients and the water, and that's often referred to as the gel fillet. So if we actually took a leaf, <coughs> and on the right here you can see a, a leaf which has been partially filleted, and you'll notice in the centre you have this large mass of the gel fillet, the parenchyma cells. It has a shiny surface. Uh, that is the mucilage layer. And then if you look uh, at the leaf at the top there, you can see little black dots. Those little black dots are the pericyclic tubules, and it's in those where you find the bitter aloes. Um, in aloe itself, uh, there are several hundred different nutrients. Um, so far, around 75 have been identified, and we class them into 10 major groupings. Now, you can get quite involved with this and bogged down, because you're going to start looking at all the different vitamins and minerals and uh, other carbohydrates found in aloe, but we'll just go through them briefly. All you need to know is where to find them. So if somebody asked you a question, you know where to look to see if it's found in the aloe. These nutrients are present in very small amounts. Uh, they contribute to your daily requirement, but they're not enough if you're deficient in something. So the first one you'll see here is a lignin. It's a woody substance. It's found with the cellulose, uh, and all it can do is help to take other nutrients down through your epidermis into your dermal layer. And it's in the uh, dermal layer where a lot of the nutrients are needed to do their, do their job. The saponins, great soapy cleansers for the skin. Many products you buy on the high street or on the internet these days will have saponins in them. Uh, the bitter aloes found in the sap, as I said, gives a colour and that delicious taste that you enjoy every morning. Uh, it has mild antimicrobial properties and it's very soothing and calming, particularly when applied to the skin. So they're important points to have. Some companies remove those entirely from their product. So again, that makes us unique. You have a very, very small amount present so you don't lose those properties. The vitamins, um, again, there's quite a lot of detail that you can say about these vitamins. Basically, they're split into water-soluble and fat-soluble. The difference is water-soluble ones you have to take every single day because they're not stored in the body, but the fat-soluble are stored, um, so you don't need those necessarily every single day. The water-soluble ones, the important ones, are the B vitamins, such as B1, which is thiamine. It helps with your brain activity. Uh, two is the riboflavin. Three is uh, the niacin. Niacin helps with hydrogen transfer. Um, six, nine, and 12 are important because they help to control the amount of homocysteine in your body, which can make sure that you maintain the health of your blood vessels. Uh, B12 is very important. It's also known as cyanocobalamin, and that one is, used to be called the animal protein factor because it was only found in uh, animal sources of food, uh, particularly things like liver. And if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you would need a supplement with B12. And again, I will say that these are present in very trace amounts. And so if you've got a deficiency, you would need to take supplements. Very important one there, water soluble is vitamin C. You know it's very important for your skin, but also your collagen. So it's involved in your bones and your tendons and your ligaments, etc., and the immune system. Uh, then we have the fat soluble ones, A, E, and choline. Remember that A, C, and E, ACE, A, C, and E, they are the antioxidant vitamins. Our bodies, through our metabolism and what we're exposed to in our environment, we get free radicals released, and they can damage cells. You need to mop them up, help the liver to mop them up. And to do that, the liver needs vitamins A, C, and E. Uh, vitamin A is uh, retinol for your eyes, vitamin E, uh, particularly for um, fertility in the immune system, and choline uh, helps with neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, which you may have heard of. It's uh, part of the way uh, impulses are sent down your nerves. You need acetylcholine to jump across the synapses. So you've got those vitamins. There's 10 of them all together. And then we have the minerals. Um, again, with these, they're present in small amounts. Calcium, of course, 90% of that's normally stored in your skeleton. It's involved in many different processes, um, muscle activity, your nerve impulses, even the end receptors in your uh, hormones require calcium. 
Several of the others are involved with your acid-base balance of your blood and osmotic pressure in your blood. It's important to keep that stable. And those are like sodium, potassium, and calcium. You'll notice iron there, which is essential for your hemoglobin in your blood. Uh, potassium is involved with your contraction of your heart muscles as well. Chromium is uh, important in insulin. Magnesium, this is in involved in uh, nerve, nerves and, and also in your muscles, too little and you become hyper-excitable. And you see that quite a bit in animals. Zinc for your skin, manganese for all sorts of biochemical pathways, and finally copper there, which is actually important for fertility, it's important for um, red blood, blood cell formation, uh, your skin and particularly your hair, and in animals, wool for example, uh, to get crimp, which is the elasticity in wool from sheep, it needs copper. And uh, there's big deficiencies with copper in, in animals, particularly with fertility. So remember again, present in small amounts, if you have a deficiency, you need to take a supplement. Other nutrients, uh, you have the amino acids. Uh, 20 are, are known, and 19 of those are actually found in aloe. So there's a good content of amino acids. These are the building blocks of your proteins, so your muscles, for example, and all the cells. There are eight essential amino acids which have to be taken every single day. Seven are found in aloe. So you can see how aloe is contributing nutrients to your daily requirement every day. Plant enzymes, they can help with um, digestion. Fatty acids, they're an important group because they are the, give you the properties of soothing, calming, and, and cleaning, particularly when applied to the skin. And salicylic acid, you do need to remember this one. Yes, it's important for exfoliation and cleaning off the skin of like, dead cells, um, but people get confused with salicylic acid and aspirin. Uh, aspirin is actually acetyl salicylic acid, which is not found in aloe vera. So aspirin is not present in aloe, it's just a natural plant form, salicylic acid, which is found in many of the plants that you eat on a daily basis. So it's absolutely safe to take from that point of view. Sugars, very important group, been well studied over the years. I spent a lot of time doing trials with aloe looking at these sugars. Um, you have simple sugars, they're called monosaccharides, like glucose and fructose but also they can be in chains called polysaccharides. And a very important one is made up of glucose and mannose, and that's ace manin. Ace manin is a well-known immunomodulator. It has actually been extracted by some companies, like the Carrington Laboratories, and made into a product called kerosene to try to maintain the health of your immune system. Also in the sugars, you have monose phosphate, which helps with uh, wounding and maintaining and helping to uh, heal wounds. The ACE man is an unusual molecule because it's small enough to be absorbed whole uh, through your digestive system into your bloodstream and that's called pinocytosis. You'll see that word at the bottom there. And that means the whole molecule gets into your blood. Why is that important? It's important because if you follow <coughs> this little diagram here, which initially looks complicated but it's very simple, if we start in the middle, where you see at the top in the middle you've got lymphoid tissue, and at the bottom you have thymus processing, uh, what happens is you have white blood cells which come from your bone marrow, and you can see the picture of the bone there, and they can either be processed through the lymphoid tissue or the thymus gland. And the lymphoid tissue, which is particularly around your digestive system, if the cells go to that area, they're processed into B lymphocytes. And B lymphocytes are the ones which produce your immunoglobulins or antibodies. You're probably more familiar with that name, antibodies. So they come from the cells processed through the lymphoid tissue. If they go to the thymus, from the bone marrow, they're processed uh, into B lymphocytes. Sorry, T lymphocytes. And T lymphocytes can sell message, send messages to the B lymphocytes to produce more of the antibodies. So they're maintaining your immune system. So if we go right back to the beginning and go to the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see there's a little diagram of an aloe vera plant. <clears throat> so when you drink your aloe vera gel every morning, that contains the ace manin. And you'll see that if you follow it along, it goes into your blood and it gets actually consumed as a food, as a carbohydrate source, by the T lymphocytes. 
that encourages them to produce little messages called cytokines which tell the B lymphocytes to maintain your antibody levels. So by taking your gel every day, you're having this process going on, boosting your lymph cells and therefore maintaining your immunity. The types of overall action uh, of aloe are shown here on this slide. It provides those essential nutrients that I've gone through, um, your vitamins, your minerals, your amino acids, carbohydrates, etc. It's a great cleanser for the skin if you apply it topically because it has the natural saponins in it. It will penetrate through the epidermis to the dermal layer because of things like lignin in it. Wonderful moisturizer. You'll know yourselves if you go to the high street or online and many, many skin products, shampoos, etc., have aloe added to them because they know it will naturally moisturize your skin. It's great for debriding. Um, that word, all it means is that if you've got dead cells on your skin, um, say you've had a, a little scratch or a little wound or a burn and there's dead cells, it will clean that naturally up for you. Jelly is very good at doing that, an activator. So it cleans up all those dead cells because for something to heal, you need to get rid of the dead cells first so new epithelial cells can come in and, and actually heal it over. It's very soothing and calming and it has no known side effects. Many trials were done back in the 60s and showed that aloe didn't have uh, many in the way of side effects. So it's very safe to use both in humans and animals. I mean, I've been drinking it 27 years. So that just goes and says for itself. So the actions. The thing to remember, the basic principle is, aloe vera helps to maintain the health in two particular areas, the epithelial tissues and the immune system. And it's always simpler to go back to the basics every time. So if somebody asks you a question, you just need to go back and think to yourself, now, does, where does aloe help? It helps with the epithelial tissues and the immune system. What a lot of people forget is that the epithelial tissues aren't just your skin. Yes, the skin is the largest organ of your body and it covers the whole of your body, but also if any orifice of your body meets with the skin, so your mouth, for example, and you have lots of other holes that I'm not going to go into, but any of those holes which meet with your skin will be lined with epithelial tissue. So your mouth, your oral cavity, the digestive system, respiratory systems, ears, eyes, nose, urinary tract, joints, they all have epithelial-like cells where aloe can help to maintain their health. The immune system, and I've been through how aloe works as an immunomodulator, helps to keep your immunoglobulins or antibodies in, in good condition, maintaining them. It also stimulates things called macrophages, which are a, a large white blood cell which gobble up complete bacteria, and also contains the mannose-6-phosphate, which helps with wound he healing when applied to the skin. So you can see the overall benefits. Now I want to talk in detail about the products because that's why we've come here this evening is to really find out about these products. And these products, as I said earlier, I've been taking these for over uh, 27 years now. Um, formulations have changed a little, but not, not a lot. But first of one I want to talk about is the actual gel. This is the foundation product. This is the product which has the maximum content of aloe vera. This is the product that we should take every single day, and um, I've been doing that for 27 years. So first of all, notice uh, on the slide that this product contains nearly 100% aloe vera, pretty well identical to what came out of that leaf. It's actually 99.7%, so it's very high. We recommend that you drink 120 mils a day. Uh, later on, we will look at a table which gives a little bit more detail but we recommend for a human you take 120 mils a day. It has no added sugar to it. Therefore, you'll find it only has two and a half calories for 120 mils, so it's absolutely tiny. But what it does has is 84% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin C. And as we said earlier, vitamin C, you need to take it on a daily basis because it's water soluble and it's gonna help with your, your skin, your cartilages and your anywhere where there's collagen, your bones, etc., and your immune system. So it's going to actually increase the benefits of the aloe. It's a recyclable carton. It has no chemical preservatives in it at, at all. It basically, the only things added to it are ascorbic acid 
um, which is vitamin C, and citric acid, and they're done to balance the pH and help as a preservative. It's aseptically produced um, pH balance. That's always a little bit um, confusing. Why do we say aseptically produced? It's because, as I said earlier, what makes our company unique, we actually do have the production facilities, the initial part, on the plantations. So we can actually start the process within six hours of those leaves being cut. And that means that we can actually do this by a flash, what they call flash heating, which is a very, very short period, less than 15 seconds at below pasteurization temperature. So it doesn't affect the actual gel at all, but it means it's preserved without adding lots of other chemicals to it, which is what you want. The other important point about Forever Living's uh, aloe is that it's fully traceable. No other company has full control. We call it vertically integrated because we control the plantations, the plants, right through to the production facilities to where it's um, sold to the, to the customers. And so it's fully traceable. Each carton has a number on it. And from that number, they can trace it back to the aloe fields and the plantation it came from. We only use mature leaves. That makes us unique. Uh, we don't go around with a big machine like a combine harvester and just chop off the whole plant we actually go round by hand and only take the mature leaves from the outside of the plants. And then when it goes back to the production facility, it's hand filleted through that mucous layer, like I said earlier on. So we know exactly what we're getting in our products. It's processed within six hours, as I said. Um, therefore, it's essentially identical to the fresh and leaf gel. It maintains the health, particularly of the epithelial tissues and the immune system. And remember all those other epithelial tissues in our bodies. It has a two-year shelf life in these cartons and 30 days um, when it's kept in the refrigerator. Uh, it's in these tri, you can get it in tri packs in uh, 330 mils as well. So you've got huge variation uh, that you can purchase the products in. It has the International uh, Science Council certificate on each one. It has, it's suitable for vegetarians and vegans. It's halal and kosher, and it's not tested on animals. So it has all of the right things that you need to guarantee to your customers this is a, a very good product. The next product is the berry nectar. Uh, this one has, as you can see, 90.7% aloe. So all those properties of aloe vera I just spoke about, it's actually in here as well. Uh, people sometimes take it because they prefer the flavour with the apple juice and the cranberries in. Uh, cranberries have been used for hundreds of years to help urinary tract. And so that's why I would tend to, to take this one. Uh, 30 calories in 120 mils. And again, it has 84% of your daily requirement of vitamin C, which as I said earlier, you need to take daily. So if you take these products daily, you're going to get your vitamin C. The next one is the... Peaches, which again has a very high aloe content, 84.3% of the pH balance in the leaf gel. Again, you're going to have all those properties of aloe vera. It has uh, a very pleasant taste. Um, I tend to, tend to keep it in my house because I tend to just drink it like a fresh juice every morning and I consume too much of it. Um, it has 8% peach puree with white grape juice. So you wouldn't give it to dogs. Dogs don't tolerate grapes very well. It has 35 calories in every 120 mils, and it has 40% of your daily requirement of vitamin C. So again, it's going to contribute to your daily requirement of the vitamin C, as well as all those other nutrients we talked about. And then the latest gel is the mango, which you can see here. And it contains, and it's very rich again in vitamin C, um, 86%, so that's pretty high. Uh, it's it's going to, sorry, it has 75% of your daily requirement of vitamin C and 86% pure aloe vera uh, with this lovely natural mango puree. It's a very pleasant product, this one. Um, but remember, it's going to have the similar properties to the actual gel again. But my opinion is, if you can drink the straight gel, that is the one to actually take because it has pretty well 100% aloe vera in it. If you find that you can't quite cope with the taste, then you have plenty of options. You have the nectar, you have the peaches, and you have the mango. 
So how much do we actually take? I think, first of all, before we do that, we ought to look at one other product, um, the actual Freedom. This is one of my favorite products. I take this product every single day. Again, it contains 90% aloe vera, but there is a difference here. It has 90% of stabilized aloe vera gel. That's the original gel that I talked about at the beginning of this training. Um, it also has the glucosamine sulfate and the chondrotin sulfate as well, and the methyl sulfonyl methane, which have been shown to help to maintain the health of your joints. It has a small amount of orange concentrate in it. Um, I can never really taste the orangey flavor to it. Uh, the serving, again, is 120 mils, and there's about 35 calories in every 120 mils. So if you want to maintain the health of your joints, then this is the product to take every day, and this is the product that I take every day and have done ever since it, it came out. Um, I just want to say a little bit about the stabilized gel. While it's slightly different to the pH balance gel, um, it contains 97% aloe vera, um, which came directly from the leaf as before, but they also add to it sorbitol, and these are other plant extracts. So sorbitol comes from maize, corn on the cob, you'll be very familiar with that, and it's a natural sweetener and stabilizer. The ascorbic acid, uh, vitamin C, regulates acidity, and the citric acid is a natural preservative. Those, are, those two actually are found normally in aloe anyway. Potassium sorbate, that comes from mountain berries, so it's another plant source, inactivates any enzymes. And xanthan gum, another natural product, comes from seaweed or kelp, and it's a natural emulsifier. Uh, they also add uh, tocopherol, which is vitamin E, that acts as an antioxidant, as you know, vitamins A, C, and E were the antioxidant vitamins. So you can see this is slightly a different product, um, but it still has a very high aloe content, also remember that a lot of the topical products we use were based on this stabilized gel uh, formulation. So how much do we actually take? Well, you can see here on the slide um, that because I have a veterinary background as well as a medical background, um, we start with the children's pets. So you have hamsters, mice, gerbils. Uh, they're on a very small amount. You'll notice that there's three columns there, a starting volume, a maintenance volume, and a very long-term volume. Um, and the first column shows that for those little animals, we would give them about two mils in a day, often added to their water. Just be careful to make sure they do continue to drink. You're not putting them off their drinking. Uh, the next ones are the rats and some of the smaller birds like pigeons, also guinea pigs, one of my favorite animals, great children pets, guinea pigs. They live a lot longer than hamsters, for example, and they talk to you, guinea pigs. They're very talkative. They're on about four mils. Cats, um, an average cat would be on 20 mils. You don't suddenly add 20 mils to a cat's diet or water. You'll put them off immediately. You do what we've always said. You put a small amount onto the back of their paw and they will lick it and they will get accustomed to the taste and then you can start adding it to their, their water or, 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 or their food. Dogs, average 30 kilo dogs, about 60 mils. Um, you'll notice I've put the humans in with the pigs because uh, we are actually quite similar to pigs. Pigs are what we call omnivorous animals, meaning that they can eat and digest plant source material and animal source material, like meat. Um, we also take a lot of bits from pigs. We take skin from pigs to use in humans. We take uh, heart valves from pigs. And we also, um, some of the insulin comes from pig pancreas. Uh, cows and horses, around the 500 kilo, that's half a ton, uh, they're on 250 mils. Uh, for the, the, that sort of weight. So you start them on those levels. Uh, I've never had a problem with the animals of them refusing uh, to take the products. Um, the cats are the only difficult one, but we've got a way around that. Then we have the maintenance level. So once you've been on <coughs> the product for at least six weeks, uh, you may decide, yes, I'm maintaining my health and I can actually reduce the level. And you can come down to half the figures. And you'll notice that second column is half of the starting volume. So for example, a human who's on 120 mils could, could go down to 60 mils. I don't particularly recommend that. I, I believe that you should stay at the higher level. Um, most, most people and most animals you'll find they fall between those two levels to actually get the benefits you're after, maintaining your health. So you're fine with most humans. They're on a, 
at least 60, but many are on 120. Many take, take more, which is absolutely fine as well. Um, take the horse, for example. Uh, most of those will end up between the 120 to 250 mils, depending on their size. The final column on your right is the long-term one, where if you, you've been on the aloe and you feel you want to see if you could reduce it a little bit more, you can come down to those. But I find it's very rare that you'll, you'll be able to come down to that, that very low level. Stick between the first two that we've discussed, um, particularly for the humans, 120 mils. So I hope um, what I've done this evening is to show you the different uh, drinking gel products um, and I've shown you what's unique about ours. You know, the company behind it, a family company, no shareholders uh, looking for their, their money every year. It all goes back to the FBOs. Uh, also, we're unique in the fact that we own the plantations. We grow the plants ourselves. We process them very quickly and we distribute the product. So there's many unique things about our, our product, uh, what's actually in it, and the fact that the way it is actually uh, stabilized is unique to us, and that preserves all those nutrients I talked about. So I hope that's been um, of use to you. Uh, finally, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to contact a head office at events slash UK at flp.ltd, and they will come back to you um, answering the questions where we can. But thank you very much for listening tonight. Thank you.